so basically uh, today's session will entirely be focused on the basics of a reporting how are we getting started with reporting what is the role of a report writer and uh, we'll be talking about the basics of the business with, uh, object details so you, we know that in work day all the reports work on uh, the model of business object and data so so we'll be understanding that we'll be understanding what all tools does work day offers as a report writer what all tools can be offered what are the different kind of ways you can present data in the form of reports uh, to your clients or to your organizations or to the stakeholders that request for those reports so those are the things we'll be talking about uh, we'll be also understanding the different kind of data sources that are available in work day uh, and then we'll be moving towards understanding what are the different kind of reports one can build in work day starting from advanced matrix custom and so on so so this will be the entire crux of today's session uh, but looking forward to the week we'll be spending time on uh, understanding the basics of advanced reports and then we'll be moving towards how to what are the different type of calculated fields one can build in work day and uh, how can one build each type of calculated field so this week will be all about starting from the scratch of the session uh, that's about it. do you have any questions before we begin with the session yeah this is this is all about understanding the functional concept the one that you are talking they come from yeah. the functional setup model these are organization types and everything to understand okay. this you you will have to take these a uh, functional training you know basically the hcm or the finance whichever module i guess you're working on finance module right now right yes the finance, yes yeah mostly the yeah. So that yeah. so you, I I will I'm not saying that this training session is going to facilitate understanding what those means because then we'll be moving off track. But it will of course while we will be building reports in these sessions, I will be using these kind of fields thoroughly. Uh, so you will of course interact with such kind of fields. We'll be working with supervisory orgs. We'll be working with location hierarchies, cost center hierarchies. I will show you how to extract levels of different hierarchies. I guess you are trying to understand those concepts, right? That if your yes, report is yes. requiring to look at yes. second level of your cost center hierarchy, how do I do that? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We will be talking about all this. Of course, we will be doing that. But uh, what exactly do they mean? How are they configured in Workday? Is all about understanding finance as a module. So this session is will be focused on how, as a report writer, uh, you should be able to pick up first. the right type of report when a requirement comes to you right from the stakeholder that hey we are looking for so and so data in work day and you need to present it to me in a form of report now this reporting session will help you when that uh, request is presented to you you will be able to now communicate it back or understand it in a reverse engineering method that okay this is a report if i have to deliver this report it should be a following report type uh, which data source i should pick up whether i should give it as a trending report whether i should give it as a matrix report to them second thing uh, you will be able to understand okay are they delivered fields only that can help me build this report or should i go ahead and build it fields how should i build the output should it be a table uh, if it's a chart how do i make it a pie chart and so on so getting it that's yes, how yeah. this is how, what is this training will help you achieve so this training will be entirely focused on that bit okay so maybe uh, if you can while i'm demoing the reports and you see that something is uh, i will try my best yeah i'm a reporting person i'm a completely work day reporting person but i do yeah. slightly because since i've been working in that domain since 5 years i have slightly idea what each of the i've not said that i can help you understand everything because i am not a finance person i'm a reporting person but working in the reporting domain at least i have slight understanding So if at all you feel confused that hey what does this mean and what exactly is this how is this going to look like in the report I can of course you can uh, for, feel free to stop me and ask me that I'll try my best to help you understand that but yeah, yeah. I will uh, recommend to understand these concepts do you have community access has the organization provided you that Who's yeah you you get the client yeah the client access that community yeah. provides I understand. Yeah, so I would recommend just sit on community, spend some time. A lot of things are open to clients also to understand. But they does let you document a lot of things as client is shared with you. Uh, it will uh, be on the recording. This entire deck is very thorough in nature. 
you can access okay. the recording at any point of time so you can look at these uh, uh, i have built a deck in such a way that whatever i'm talking is well documented here okay 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 yeah good cool. okay so that's it okay now let's talk about uh, our very first basic for today's session understanding workday uh, report writer tool so whatever we deal with in the workday reporting environment uh, it's all running on the basis of a report writer that is the access that a reporting consultant or reporting analyst gets to work in workday is also called a report writer you very well need to have a report writer access assigned as a security group to you to start building reports then only you can get access to the various tasks like create custom reports create calculated field copy custom reports view custom reports all these tasks have to you need to have the report writer access above and beyond that uh, what report writer means in workday is basically the platform where you are creating custom reports okay and worklets and dashboards right uh one interesting thing about workday's report writing tool is it's completely self service model rather than a uh, end user delivery model which means that if a security access uh, if a security group has access to run the report they can simply log into workday and they can run it when needed there is no concept of a centralized team running all reports and deliver it to end users it's not like that uh if you have a report right access if you if you have shared the report with a particular security group let's imagine your uh, finance partner if finance partner has access to the report they can get into the tenant they can uh, look for that report and they can run it for themselves it's not always that as a reporting team they will keep coming asking you that hey we have done this report and send the data to me that would not work they let the reporting team be the Uh, i will say center of excellence for building reports rather than having the job of running the reports and sharing them with users until and unless uh, the security group cannot be given access to the reports so when when we are talking about access let me help you understand how access is given to the report let me just get into the tenant for that matter mm, okay give me a bit I'll just get into the tenant and show you how exactly security works for this. So let me just open a very simple report. Yeah. and all the reports that i would have built uh they all come under the report tag of report training so once i give the demo and you will be in the tenant and you want to look for the reports that we have spoken about in that particular day you can very well uh, search with the tag report training you will see the reports that we spoke about okay for your reference okay now uh, this is a very simple matrix report it's it's uh, it's built When on the data source for like tag you mean uh, name of the report uh no this is what so uh, i'll show you this session will show you how to look for reports and everything but i'll show you how to you can filter reports and report tag this is what i mean by report tag we we'll, okay. uh, we'll talk about how to create these and everything okay now uh, whenever we talk about who can access a report we talk about report security as we know that every report is built on a data source right and in workday security works through domain there are uh, every object in workday is tied to a particular domain means if you want to view someone's salary that will also be tied to a particular domain if you want want to view someone's job detail like which organization they are sitting in what is the name of the position which organization or uh, sorry which who is the manager for that worker and everything every object every particular field and object in workday is tied to a domain for reporting consideration who can run the report completely depends who has access to this data source so this report is built on a data source that called that says extends report line for company so let me open this report uh, particular data source for you so see this is a particular uh, data source it's a work day own data source which you can see and if you want to view the security for this data source in the sense that who has access to this particular 
data source you will be able to see it via the security tab you will be able to click on this view security so suppose if i have built a report on expense report lines for company these are the only nine security groups with who i can share this report cash analyst cash manager finance auditor expense partner if at all someone comes and say that hey can you give me a connection so you might see something which you so if someone comes and says to you that hey uh, uh, can you uh, please uh, share this report uh, with uh, someone like hr partner you will have to first assess does hr partner has access to this data source using these steps that i just showed you if not then you will have to ask the security team for that work day that hey can we ac provide access to hr partner if they say that no it will open a lot of unwanted information then only you will be the one running this report with your access uh, you will be putting that data either into excel format you will be putting it either into a pdf format and then sending it to their end user that's how we do it but unless all the security groups have access and you have shared these reports with these security groups there is also a second level It, it doesn't only mean that if cash analyst has access to this data source, they can look at reports which are built on this data source. You need to explicitly go and share the report with these day, uh, particular security group for them to run this report. So if you have shared this report with cash analyst, they can very well get into the tenant, and I'll show you how do we look for reports and everything, and they can run this report. Okay. So that's okay. about the uh, the self service model workday. That's what I was meaning to say when we were. talking about the self service model now let me get back to the uh, deck just a second yeah now uh, another thing to understand here is uh, basically you have to first and this is a, a thumb of rule i follow whenever i build reports for myself i always bifurcate a report requirement into certain questions that i ask myself that hey uh, and then i follow these particular steps to understand how exactly can i uh, build this report suppose if a report requirement comes to me for a particular report i always ask these set of questions to my self uh, so suppose i uh, you have got a report requirement where they have asking you that show me all the uh, salary changes that has happened for an employee in the past 6 uh, months okay uh, all the salary changes for an employee sitting in a particular cost center okay moment a requirement comes to me like this my very first analysis is what is the different report type i can use uh we will talking about different report types in the coming slides but yeah the very first question i ask is if it's a advanced report can i build a simple report if it will be a search report matrix trending composite which particular report should i be uh, presenting my format into so once i under one few we understanding what each of these report means you will be able to answer this question very well then comes and in that to understand this you might have to ask questions to the stakeholder as well that hey how do you want the data to be presented do you want it to be summarized as graph and charts do you want it to be interactive report where you are filtering real time data using faces and all or do you want it to be a uh, rows and columns where you are simply showing the data as rows and columns okay then uh, the next question i ask is uh, is there a delivered report in workday which can already meet my requirement we know that workday provides a number huge number of delivered reports right to work with so that's the next question that we ask that is there a delivered report that i can use if not is there a close to delivered report in workday we do have a compensation changes report maybe that's not exactly what my client is asking me for but it's a very good starting point if it's a uh, if it's a standard report and not an expressive report we can very well see how well they have configured that report as in what data sources have they used what fields have they used and you can take that as a starting point and then based on your client's exact requirement you can further tweak that report you can maybe add more calculated fields add more filters prompts to that then comes uh if if at all there is no delivered report then you will have to see that okay maybe i need to create a custom report if i have to create a custom report my very the most important question that comes to my mind is which data source to use we'll be talking about data source selection tomorrow when we'll be building advanced report how can you 
uh, build one report uh, and like if you are presenting one set of data how can it be achieved with multiple data sources it's not always that there is this one data source that helps you gather the data there can be multiple data source that can also help you achieve the same set of data it's all about which is the most optimal data source and by optimal i mean performance enhanced data source so in reporting very one important factor and we'll be talking about this later towards this entire training session maybe in the fourth or fifth week it's very important that reports should be performance optimized the user should not keep waiting for 20 minutes and 25 minutes to get data right they want data quickly and fast so how, how what are the different factors that impact it we'll talk about it later in the training session so that's it yeah then when once you have picked the data source you will be able to uh, ask that is there a index data source which is like a high performing data source we will be talking about the difference between standard and index data source. we'll also be uh, then once you have finalized your data source you will have to understand what are fields do i need to put in the report as in what are the columns one wants to see are these all work they delivered fields or do they need to be calculated fields that i need to construct if at all delivered fields uh, which is the bo from which it's going to come then uh, if it's calculated fields what are the different kinds of calculations i have to create do i have to create <laughs> so sorry look up related values arithmetic calculations do i have to concatenate text do i have to create look up date roll up or look up hierarchy there are various ways you can build it once we have undergone this week's calculated field session you will be able to thoroughly understand what each, each of these means and then slowly and steadily we'll move towards does this report needs to be filtered is the user only looking at a particular set of data or i need to provide entire company's data to them uh, do i need to sort it do they need any prompt to run this report real time or everything needs to be filtered in the filter itself uh, uh, who are the security groups with whom i have to share these reports so basically i always uh, bifurcate my report requirement into these set of questions i maybe noted down somewhere but my in my entire thought proce process focuses around this and this helps me achieve my report requirement in a much much better way so that that's a very good way to do it so th th that's how i always structure my thought process whenever report requirement comes to me okay yeah okay now let's look at what are the different ways in which you can present information to the stakeholders in workday it's not just that you can present data to your uh, client in the form of what do we call as the report there are various various ways in which information can be presented to the client the very first of them happens to be uh, your uh, worklet now worklet is worklet looks something like this right it's it's basically a, a a tile format on the home page i'm sure when you log in to work there you might have seen especially when you're proxying as a user you might have seen they view these uh, little little tiles presented on their home page right and these yeah. tiles uh, are are basically grouped as per their function maybe if they are manager they will have a tile for their entire team if they're looking at uh, if they're looking at the expense department they will have a tile for the expense and all these worklets have will have multiple different reports within them so basically you are organizing your reports in the form of uh, a particular uh, you can assume it that this tile is housing different reports pertaining to a different function of the manager so if you happen to be a manager of an expense department you will have different functions to do right you might have to uh, first you might have to uh, manage your team so you see all your team details under one tile tile right uh, you might have uh, to look at uh, the talent details of your team basically what was the performance rating last year is there a performance review coming due any time soon Uh, are they up for a promotion and all those kind of things you might have to see then you might also have a favorite tile by favorite you mean you want to store all the reports that you run on a daily or a weekly basis you might just want to store those tasks and report under your favorites so that's how that also comes under a reporting and uh, i will say reporting and analytics domain of work day we will do a thorough worklet and dashboard session in the third week uh, we'll try to achieve it by third week but yeah we will be having it then the next way you can present data as a report 
dashboard now dashboards are very interactive right so let me just uh, get they are very analytical in nature by analytical i mean dashboards are consolidated a lot it's just not grouping reports but a lot of many things you can group tasks you can group alerts you can group announcements everything can be grouped under a dashboard so in workday a dashboard is provided as six tabs i'm not going to get into depth of it because we have a dedicated session for it but yes so dashboards are primarily consolidated as a uh, as a, a, a assortment of reports announcements and tasks and that can also be shared with multiple security groups uh, they can either access the dashboard from their home page or you can they can explicitly go and they add that dashboard to their table so that happens to be our dashboard another way you can present data to the client is embedded analytics now this is something little functional in nature why i'm saying it's functional in nature is because embedded analytics can would be configured on business processes uh, do you understand what exactly uh, our business processes in workday yeah Okay, so I, I, yeah. So whenever so suppose th uh, there is a BP, right? Uh, there's a BP to approve expense report for a, a employee. Suppose, okay, maybe uh, there is this uh, the employee had gone on site and they have a number of expenses and correct like airfare, uh, hotel expenses, food expenses. There is a proper business process articulated with multiple steps in that. So suppose in order to approve that expense report, maybe uh, whosoever, maybe it's the financial analyst. who is approving the approving the business process will need a set of data real time data to be reflected on on their bp like this what you can see here they might want to see who is the worker how many years they might be with the organization which position are they in because maybe for different positions the budget is different right uh, maybe you are only allowed to spend 100 dollars per day based on your job profile or maybe 200 dollars if you belong to a different job profile <laughs> you getting that So maybe that person needs real time data to uh, approve that particular so that is when you build reports whatever real time data do they need you build reports for that and then whoever is building that business process your functional person will use that report and they will configure it on the business process or maybe they ask you to configure it in the business process so that's about embedded analytics embedded analytics are not explicit reports that can be run rather they are reports that are configured on the business process steps to help the security group whoever is executing that step to help them execute that step right you present information in the form of a report as a part of business process so that's about embedded analytics okay so yeah. another way you can present data to them is in the form of alerts now alerts is something very it's one of my favorites uh, because i find it very user friendly alerts are basically uh, a small small snippets of reports that get automatically delivered to your inbox uh, at a regular intervals suppose you happen to be a financial analyst okay and you always uh, need to see every week that what are the upcoming expense uh, 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 in progress expenses that i need to uh, suppose your organization follows a policy that every friday all the pending expense reports for this week should be approved so alert is basically like a reminder you are sending to that particular financial analysis that hey these are the set of expense reports due for your particular company the company that you are looking after and you need to look into these particular set of alerts uh, to work through that so alerts are uh, basically you build a report you filter those reports based on a particular criteria so suppose this criteria that send the status of all in progress expense reports for for the prior week to the financial analyst you will schedule those alerts to go into that financial analyst inbox time and again and that's how you can go about it okay yeah so this is another way uh, to present now whatever ways we looked at right now these are all basically what do we say as uh, uh, ways to show a report apart from the usual ones that how we go and run and look at these are also ways in which you can present data to your stakeholders Presented. No, it's not a kind of report. Nothing. It it cannot be presented. To be honest, it's just a report that works in the background, ah, uh, to form the basis of a composite report. Ah, uh, okay. it's not also a type of report. You just for the purpose of uh, naming it somehow, you call it a sub report. But in workday, there's no actual type as sub report. 
Uh, it's just that we call them as sub report because they're used as sub reports in composite reports, but that's all. That's all we have that we do with sub reports. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Now let's move to our next. Yeah. Now this one I have uh, thoroughly spoken about, uh, which is about your uh, data source, uh, sorry, report security. But yeah, one thing that I want to highlight here. So as you know, in Workday, we have standard espresso reports and then we have custom reports, right? Whatever is delivered by Workday is always uh, con uh, uh, defined as either standard or espresso report. By standard, we mean those reports which you can easily copy uh, the report definition and tweak it as per your need, right? But espresso reports are reports which you cannot be copied. You can only see the output of the report. They, ra they rather work on an algorithm in Workday's background. That's how it happens, but nothing uh, beyond that. You cannot do anything with that. You can only look at the output of the report and you cannot look at the report definition. So the, when it comes to Workday delivered report security, we cannot really tweak the security. It is as it is. And just like custom reports, even their security is determined by the data source on which they are built. So uh, once you get to understand, and there is also a report in Workday, we'll be talking through that, all standard reports. That shows you which one of security groups can access it. So let me show you that first. Let me just get into that. So there is this very uh, flexible and user-friendly report. It's called All Standard Report. If you want to uh, view all the standard reports that are delivered by Workday, and you want to view which particular security groups have access, you can just a second. I guess it's called Workday Delivered Report. This is a report you can access here. <laughs> I don't know why it's not coming up. Usually, I don't know if I have access to the task in this thing. Yeah, work based standard report, sorry. Okay. So see, you can filter either on report categories. If you're looking for maybe only finance related reports, you can do that. You can filter on whichever particular data you are particularly, like if you're looking for payroll, you're looking for bad process, you can filter on that. But let me just uh, click on maybe uh, FCM. Okay, and just call, let me just, I'm just running a random set here to show yeah. you how you can leverage this report. So here, if you, you are building maybe a report related to income statement, okay? And you want to look at if Workday has a delivered income statement report or a trial balance for that matter. You can filter on the report category. So there's this one particular standard report if you can see, and you can see, you can, you can also look at the security and everything for that matter in this particular uh, report. So that's how it, it shows the name of the report, the category. If you want to open the report, you can do it from here, the description. It also shows if it's an espresso report or a, a standard. If it's an espresso report, you cannot copy it. If it's a standard, you can. So that's how it happens in Workday. Now let's go back to our uh, deck. Yeah. And then coming on to the custom reports. The custom report security is determined by two factors, like I just showed you uh, prior to this. It's either uh, showed to uh, determine by the data source on which you are building the report, and once you have defined the data source, it also depends on who all are you sharing your report with. But so I'm sure since you have worked with reporting slightly, you know that uh, there is a share tab, right, under the reporting uh, definition, and there you can go and explicitly either mention the groups you want to share the report with or the users you want to share the report with. So that, that's how you determine the uh, security for custom reports. First, you have to first ensure that the data source on which you're building the report has all the security groups that the uh, that needs to run the report. Second, once you have you have the data source selected, you need to ensure that you're sharing your report explicitly with those security groups. That's about report security. Completely, like I said, they are, they are all built on data sources, right? 
So if the yeah. data source has access to that report, uh, they, so if the, you, I showed you, right, how to see which particular domain the data source is tied in. So you, you will have to first open the definition of the standard report, if it's not an espresso report, okay? We first open the definition of the standard report, then we open the data source of the standard report. Then we go under the security tab, we do the view security task, and then you will be able to see all the security groups that can run that standard report, okay? Okay. Not as a report writer, you will not have access to that. Uh, your organization will have a dedicated security personnel to do that. We will have to go and ask that particular security team that, hey, my client is requesting access to this. Right now, the domain on which this report is built or the data source on which this report is built does not have access. So I'm giving you the details of the data source. You can look into that and you can see if we can open that data source to that user. Okay. Uh, now, I'll, I'll just quickly rush through the slide because we spoke a lot about it. What exactly are the custom, ad hoc, and uh, standard reports? We know that standard reports are everything which is pre-built and delivered by Workday. Customs are the ones which report right or the reporting team creates from scratch in Workday based on their requirements. And ad hoc reports are all temporary reports. Suppose uh, you're starting a report from scratch. You don't really know if you're going to get the correct report in the first shot. So we, for, we always tend to create temp reports to get us to the end result. And temporary reports get automatically deleted after a particular date. Under the advanced tab, I will show you when we are building reports. You can check a checkbox that says temporary report, and you can mention the date after which you want it to be uh, deleted. So ad hoc reports are those kind of reports, the temp reports. Okay? Yeah. Then comes copying a, a report. So let me just show you that. They, they just need data. Yeah, they just need data at that point of time. Uh, it's not a weekly recurring, monthly recurring, or a, a periodically needed report. They just, okay. maybe they, they are doing something, and in order to support that particular task, they just need some set of data. So that way, you don't really have to uh, add that report to your report repository. You can just create a temp report once the data is done, and they are like, yes, now we are good with the data. We will utilize it in that format. Maybe after 20 or 30 days, you can uh, you can very well define on the report itself that after a month, this report should automatically get deleted from the system. So at work, they will automatically remove that report from the system. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, like um, they might need some of the reports end of the year, such reports. Yes, right, exactly, yeah. end of the year. And they might not want to use it any uh, after that at all. Uh, they might okay. even forget. You're getting these are like that comes uh, totally out of the picture. Uh, maybe they just say that, hey, can you give me details, so and so details of this particular uh, journal line? I, I just need some journal line, maybe uh, the debit minus credit amount or the budget and all those kind of things. That yeah. So you just simply build a report uh, quickly and you do that. Okay. Then yeah. comes your uh, next task here is copying a report, write a report. So let me get into the tenant again and show you how to do that. So let me open this report and just change report. So this is how we search for reports. We simply go here in the search tab, we type the name of the report, and uh, if it's present in Workday, it's gonna pop up here on the screen. So see, you can see address change report. Now there are various things here. Everything that comes under tasks and reports will either be a task, like change contact information is not a report. It's basically a task to edit a particular information. But address change report is actually a report. Then You'll also see a workday is also going to show things which are showing up here as address change. So fields yep. that are pertaining to address change, whichever has the word address change in it. So whenever, once you type a particular, uh, I will say, a keyword in the search bar, you, you will see always information bifurcated and presented to you under two things. One is a task and report. Task is basically uh, a task that you use to execute a particular function in Workday. Like you can see change contact information. This is a task which will be used by a person. And uh, this what is appearing here totally depends on your security. If you don't have security access to view these details, you won't be able to view it. Only what your security group is permitted or allowed to see in the tenant, that will only come up here. 
So suppose I wanted to look at address change report. I simply uh, type the keywords address change in the search bar and I press enter. Okay, so I can see that address change in the report is appearing here. But also uh, down below all of work day, you can see there are various things that are coming up here, like field. Yeah, any field which has the name or the keyword address change in it will also show up over here. Uh, you can see uh, it's a, there's a true and false field, there's an instance field. You can also see business objects and data sources uh, uh, pertaining to address changes coming here. So that's there. You can see all of that. Uh, in the, and you can access them. You can click on the related action bar and you can access them very well. Give me a minute. Uh, I don't know why it's not accessible as well. Very slow this thing. Okay, meanwhile, uh, I'll like that this meanwhile when I tell it anything, I will show you contextual reporting. So in Workday, we have one thing called as the uh, in Workday we have something called as contextual reporting. Contextual reporting is uh, basically when you know where the data is stored in Workday, but you don't know how to go building the report from there. So suppose if the uh, uh, you have been asked to uh, build a report to pull all the compensation related details of a worker, you know where the data is stored for compensation details of the worker, but you don't know as a starting point which field will give me those data, which business object that field will be built on, which data source should I be using to pull that data, and so and so on, those kind of things. So that, that's about contextual reporting. So I'll show you exactly how do we go about contextual report. So let me go in. Uh, I'll just open a worker's information. Open my so this is the employee for which I want all the salary details, right? Let's just leave employee. I just want salary details of a particular uh, person in my organization. So I'm going to open this particular person first. And I'm going to go. So I know that all the compensation related details of this person is stored over here, right? Their rewards, their compensation, their pay change history, everything is stored under this particular uh, uh, tab. But I don't know how, if I have been asked in a report to pull uh, what do we call as all their salary plans, like what all plans they are sitting in. So suppose they, are, they have salary, allowance, merit, bonus, stock plan assigned to them, right? But you don't know how to pull them in reports. We can very well do it from here. You can go under uh, the uh, compensation package. You can view the report fields and values. So let me just show you pay change history. So suppose I am looking at uh, the the information related to this particular. I want to build a report that gives me all the information related to this particular merit compensation change for this particular worker. Maybe the report request has come back. Build a report and show me. All the prior and current, <coughs> sorry, all the prior and current values related to a compensation change, a merit compensation change in the report. But I don't know what all fields will give me. And they want to see the reason, the total salary and allowance, the total base pay, and all those kind of things. Yeah. All those kind of things under that particular report. So what, how you can do is, and it's called contextual reporting in Bombay. I also call it reverse engineering. Reverse engineering. You can very click on the related action of that event. You can go under reporting, and you can click on report fields and values. This will give you the list of all the report fields that are related to this particular event. So let me just show it to you. It's a very handy tool. It always helps me getting started on a particular report. But I first go and ask the functional person that, hey, can you show me where this data is stored in Workday? Can you show me the event which is leading to this particular data? And I always use this. It will take a while because, of course, it's fetching a lot of information. But yes, I always follow this uh, rule of thumb when I, I start with a report, which I clearly have no idea how to start with it. Okay? Okay. So can you see? There are some thousand fields that have come up here. 
you can uh, i prefer to download it in excel because i filter a lot on this task and filtering and value and all is not friend user friendly over here so i always prefer to download uh, the excel format of this from here and then i filter on it but suppose i want to look at uh, can you see there are so many fields here so uh, maybe uh, you want to pull the employee's name you can, you are ensured that you will have to use about work of field then you check that which particular bo this field is built on you can click, simply click on this particular related action of the field and you can see that this particular field is built on action event and you will then have to go backwards you will have to see what are the data sources have primary viewers action event okay that way so you first find the field that will give you the data then you see which business objects they are built on and then you see what all data sources have those bios either as secondary business object or primary business object okay yeah so this is a very very important thing that i want you to understand so suppose they want to see that as a part of this merit plan sorry merit change were they assigned any new allowance plan yes they were so you can see you you can keep one tab open for that transaction and you can keep one tab open for this report fields and values and you can very well in that excel format you can filter and see that which which particular field is giving me that allowance plan details so it's called allowance plan assignment proposed the bo on which it's built is employee compensation event you will have to check that if i'm using a particular data source does the, that data source has that as a related business object or not or a primary business object or not it's not always necessary that uh, you only need to have data on your pbo which is a primary business object you can also work with related business objects or not so this is a very good thing that i feel you should uh, implement start implementing because it makes our life very easy to when to build reports that's called contextual reporting in multi yeah i know but this is very uh, it's it's like i also learned it later but it's very important to understand that when, especially when you're new to reporting okay okay yeah then next coming on to our next thing here is key delivered reports uh, i'll just pause a bit on this particular slide because i'm not going to walk one by one but i would just want you to run that uh, work day standard report rep after the session and you can filter for whichever domain you are interested in if you want to look at finance related reports i'll suggest you go into that uh, start looking at all the reports that you feel you are commonly asked for and you struggle building those reports start exploring because uh, work day has a lot of delivered reports which serve as a basis of a custom report so the reason i'm asking you to explore those reports is because you'll be able to understand uh, data sources better you'll be able to understand fields better looking at them so that's maybe like an assignment you can take after the session explore the delivered reports for your particular domain today uh, yeah of course because a set of delivered reports in work they are always same it depends on uh, is the client only a finance client on work day or they have also implemented hcm on the hcm system. hcm both yeah. It's him. Yeah. yeah. You can. Uh, yeah. So sure, you can uh, explore whichever category you want to start with, uh, because the set of reports is always same depending on what or modules they have purchased from what. Yeah. So then you will be able to do that. Perfect. Yeah. Now let's look at the different kind of reports work they has to offer uh, for us, and our the entire rest three weeks. Last week will be focused uh, slightly on uh, things like BERT, EIB, and all. but uh, the coming uh, this week and three weeks after that uh, the four weeks we will be talking about these things only we'll be talking about advanced reports so advanced report is we'll let first talk about simple report simple report is a very simple straight forward report that we built uh, we only use simple report as a design when you know that all the fields that you are uh, going to present in the report are on the primary business object when you do not uh, have to pull fields from related business object when you do not have to do things like look up related value and all we go with the simple report option but the moment we know that uh, the our fields are not just on the primary business object but they need to be pulled from related business object then we go with an advanced report option now when do we use advanced report is when we have uh, to present data to the client in the form of rows and columns when they want detailed data basically basically they want to look the uh, row by row detail so suppose if you are building a report for journal lines right or let's let's talk about expense uh, lines if you are if you are building a report on expense reports for an employee and you want to see detail of each and every expense report that the employee has incurred up till now <laughs> they want to see the status 
they want to see the date they want to see the amount everything they want to see all those things when when they are looking at detailed data we go with advanced reports uh that's when we leverage advanced reports then come matrix reports matrix report is uh, more of not a detailed report it's a summarization report that we use in workday when you want data to be presented in a summary format uh, uh such like in graph chart and everything especially when they are looking at average of a particular matrix you want to see the sum you want to see counts then we go with matrix report search reports are very user interactive reports uh, i don't know if you have ever applied or uh, you have looked at uh, the find candidate report uh, or or uh, if you if you have been a candidate in workday and you want to build a a, a kind uh, you you want to uh, look for job applications open in that organization then you will get to see that based on various criteria uh, you can filter and you can actually search for so maybe you know that there's a opening for workday reporting analyst you can simply type above reporting analyst and so those are interactive reports that we build we will see how to build those reports then there are transpose reports transpose reports are basically comparison reports in workday when you want to see so suppose there is a uh, succession planning happening in workday and there are 10 candidates selected for the succession plan and you want to select the uh, uh, you want to uh, an- analyze all those 10 candidates based on five criteria first what has when were were they last promoted second what was their uh, performance rating for the past two years uh, then their potential all those kind of metrics suppose they want to so this transpose report will show you side by side data on the, of these five metrics for those 10 candidates so transpose reports are used for those kind of purposes then comes nbox and most of the reports um, not many organizations use only those organizations which heavily invest in calibration like performance calibration and talent calibration use it so that's how nbox reports uh, work in workday so that's about that then comes trending report trending report is a very interactive report uh, in finance it comes very handy when you need to summarize your data based on a time period maybe by fiscal period or uh, current year to date or year on year month by month that is when trending report comes into picture when you are summarizing your data uh, based year on year or by via different fiscal period schedules then that is when we use trending report then the last and the most interesting and the most complex one happens to be composite even though complex i, I like it as a reporting methodology because it helps you do so much composite report is when you have to present data from two different data sources or from two different time periods or you or basically have to present data in a particular format which cannot be achieved by a, the rest of the reporting um type that is when we build composite report when you know that i have two set of data to present but they are both uh, sitting on two different data sources such that i cannot pull it on one particular data source that is when i go with composite report i bring data from two different reports and combine it in one composite report or maybe i want to show side by side data of two different time periods and i know that trending report will not let me do that maybe because i have to execute calculations based on that and maybe i want to show difference between year 1 and year 2 that is when i go with composite report. so they are very uh, and everything you will uh, see how to configure columns configure rows outlining structures repeating column group all of that will be shown to you how to uh, do calculations on composite reports all of that will be covered so yeah, yeah. Uh, in in week 3 we will be talking about composite reports okay yes so uh, we will learn about it it will be it will be it's a very in depth session related to that because i remember when when we spoke you were you wanted to learn this particular uh, kind of reporting so i have kept it very extensive and vast okay. we will walk step by step through all the features okay okay yeah okay now let's look at the object model of report uh, remember i just showed you the context con- contextual report uh, and what did i tell you once you have identified a field always work backwards first see which particular business or first identify which field will give me this value it's not always necessary that only delivery field can give you this value uh, you it might be a calculated field but you have to also find because calculated excuse me <laughs> because calculated field also also built on delivery field you have to identify that which particular delivery field stores 
<laughs> this value in work day so suppose if i'm trying to find the salary plan of an employee you have to find that field that which particular field stores the salary plan field in work day uh, maybe i do not want to present uh, the all the data which is present under the salary plan field or maybe i just want to present a subset of that data maybe just the salary amount so i have to first see that do i need a calculated field to extract this particular details or do i have a delivered field so that's that bottom to top yeah so let me just start from again so suppose yeah. you have to extract salary plan details of a particular report right uh, in a particular report so like i showed us right how do you follow the contextual reporting method or uh, the other way to do that is look for a delivered report there are a lot of reports that show you compensation details look for a delivered report and see if there is a work day delivered field that will give you that detail okay once you have identified the field go backwards see on which particular business object that field is built on okay once you have the business object details see uh, if particular that business object uh, will be a primary view on a data source many a times that business object is never a primary view then that clearly indicates that this business object can only be brought by a related business object so see that and then you look at the primary view related to that business object and then select your data source okay so we always follow the reverse engineering method now let you let me explain what each of these things mean in bosby and then i'll show you in the tenant how exactly to understand the related business and the relationship between primary business objects okay yeah now business object in workday is basically uh, that uh, particular object where workday stores data and by that i mean all sort of data that is there in your tenant uh, there will be a business object related to organizations which will store all the data or in in form of fields so organization type will be a field under business object of organizations organization name organization hierarchy all the things related to organization so basically you can see business object as a uh, i will say a, a what do you say in house uh, or you you can assume it as a let me give you an example let's take up this organization suppose you are dealing with a, a report which you have to show all the organization details not of a worker i'm just speaking in general okay all the organization details so let's assume organization to be that parent uh, storehouse or warehouse of data right under that warehouse there are tiny tiny fields which are storing subset of that data so under organization the subsets that are being stored are organization type uh, organization name organization hierarchy all those kind of things that are stored so business object is basically the warehouse of data now this warehouse is always uh, uh, hosted on what do we call as a, a particular host which is called as data source okay now data source uh, is a key starting position in a report your report whenever you start to build a report your report is always built on a data source a data source doesn't directly supply your fields it's always via the primary business object or the related business object that you are able to extract the field so data source is just like a what do i say source that holds all these uh, under figures which you are seeing as obios related business objects and fields in it so it's it's like the master warehouse under which there is one more warehouse so let's assume as a company this is the headquarters sitting in us and which is then spread to different locations uh in us it's it's spread into different states something is in texas something is in san francisco something is in california so that's it. your data source becomes your headquarters and become head then the various locations in which the company has its office become the objects and under the objects you can assume these fields to be departments each office has its own sales department production department finance department is it is it clear now how exactly can you relate to this yes yeah are you there yes yeah. can you hear me so that, that's how you can understand this entire hierarchy yeah i can hear you so that's how you can understand the entire object model of the report okay yeah now let me show you the uh, help you explain the difference between primary business object and uh, what do we call as uh, secondary business object uh, related business object so let's assume there is this worker business object okay 
work a business object is suppose the primary business object uh, in this particular scenario okay uh, suppose i'm using a data source or uh, all active uh, workers that's my data source which has a primary view as work a business object under that there are delivered fields um, which is delivered by workday like worker hire date so class report fields in workday that you were seeing here it is basically it has three types of fields stored under it okay three kinds i'll not say types three kinds of fields one is delivered field but delivered field i mean anything which is being provided by workday delivered by workday then comes custom field custom field is something which workday did not provide uh, as delivered but your client asked uh, the partner to configure it so suppose uh, i let's assume there is this uh, uh, there is this compensation related detail that your client wants to track okay workday has delivered fees like uh, salary plan allowance plan merit plan but uh, my client also has a different kind of plan which workday doesn't deliver to us uh, it it's not it does not deliver that kind of compensation plan to them but we have an option in workday to deliver configure custom objects in workday so what we are going to suggest the client is that let me configure this particular object as a custom object in workday and we can store all that uh, uh, compensation plan related data under that object so that custom object becomes a custom field custom fields are basically those things which are not delivered by workday but from functional team perspective they were configured as custom objects in workday okay, okay. then comes called calculated fields calculated fields are those fields which were not delivered by workday but using the delivered field you had to extract some more uh, uh, calculated information so like from the hire date you wanted to extract the quarter of that hire date from dependents you wanted to extract the uh, uh, maybe you wanted to extract only a particular kind of dependent maybe you wanted to only see dependents which are of type child which is fall in the category of children so that way you know that delivered field holds that value but maybe i want only a subset of that value for which i will have to build calculated field so that's how class report fields work they have delivered fields your report might have delivered fields you will have custom fields maybe not necessary and you will have calculated fields so it will always be a permutation and combination of these kind of fields on your report a calculated field is always based on a business object when we'll get in the session later this week i'll show you we'll show okay. we'll look at the entire dynamics okay 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 now let me give you a finance example uh, uh, so that we are understanding the basics of both okay uh, workday as well as uh, sorry eighth class well as finance so let's assume there is a journal line business object this happens to be a primary bo okay and journal line business object has uh, delivered fields like cost center customer journal status maybe my client wanted to track something like journal batch which workday does not support from the delivered mechanism but yes workday lets you configure custom objects as well so what uh, we did we configured custom object here as uh, on the journal line uh, journal line and then you can pull that then we have calculated fields then we have calculated fields like fiscal period uh, and spend time maybe from the uh, accounting period or the accounting uh, date you want to pull called as fiscal period so you will build a fiscal uh, you will build a calculated field maybe a date related calculated field then maybe you wanted to also pull something called from the uh, expense client wanted to pull something called as spend type you know that i have uh, the main data stored as a workday delivered field but uh, maybe i only want to pull a subset or maybe i want to format this data in a particular format so i will have to follow the calculated field path okay yeah that's how easy do that now the next thing here is uh, you understanding different kind of uh, report fields in workday and it's very important for us to understand this this is the last or oh, i know we are above 10 reports i i hope uh, you don't have to drop off that's fine right you are okay okay yes. let me just explain you different kind of fields in workday this is the last slide and after yes. that we will go to the session so in workday you have already understood right what primary object it is okay then comes the next thing is multi instance field the one that you are seeing here 
as one to many relationship is called multi instance field multi instance field is basically uh, suppose a worker uh, they can have a uh, different kind of organizations in which they sit right you can they can sit on a call center or supervisor organization and a location hierarchy correct so yeah. the organization becomes a multi instance field for that worker because it's storing more than one value for that worker isn't it any field which stores more than one value for your object becomes multi instance field okay so for that matter let's take worker and compensation plan a worker can have different type of compensation plan like salary plan merit plan and uh, uh, your allowance plan so that way uh, you will uh, that, that becomes a multi instance field because the compensation plan on worker object is storing more than one uh, instance of that particular detail right if you will pull the compensation plan field in the report it's going to show you the salary plan the allowance plan and the merit plan details okay then comes single instance field which happens to be the and all these things the icon uh, how does work be denote which is a single instance which is a multi instance is through these icons so you should always remember these icons a single okay. instance field has basically one to one relationship means it will only store one value in this particular so a worker can only sit on one supervisory organization right yeah so whenever i'm pulling the field supervisory organization is only going to return one value for that worker the exact supervisory organization on which it is sitting so that way it becomes a single instance field any field which houses only one instance of a value for the object i'm not just talking about worker even in journal line any particular field which hosts only one or uh, uh, one instance or one uh, line of object for that particular object will become single instance field okay then okay. comes your currency field currency fields are basically fields like uh, salary base pay Uh, allowance amount, all those fields which have currency details attached to them, like USD, INR, all those things will become your currency field. So it's always denoted by uh, your dollar sign. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then comes true and false condition. True and false condition is basically this or that. Basically means if something is a, basically a condition. So suppose I, I, if I'm talking about a, a, a expense report, right? so if i if i build a condition saying that expense report should only be of type air fare okay then that becomes a condition for me either it can be true or either it can be false right expense report can either be air fare for a particular instance or it cannot be air fare for a particular instance right so at times it will return me a yes value or at times it will give me a no value so basically a kind of work they also lets you have fields which are condition based in nature true and false Then comes date field. We track lot of dates in work day, right? Hire date, due date, uh, your fiscal period date, your accounting period date, your budget period date, right? All those kind of dates we track in work day. So all of that that falls under date field. Then comes numeric field. Numeric fields are basically uh, the host numbers in them. Uh, numeric and and you will see overlapping. Many a times, currency fields without currency become numeric fields. So suppose if I'm trying to pull salary amount, if they don't have a currency attached to them, they will come up to me as numeric fields. Age of a person, that is a numeric field. Length of service, that is a numeric field. So all those kind of things become numeric fields. Then comes text field. Anything which is housing a textual value and is not instance in nature, means they don't have one to many or one to one relationship, becomes text field. like the name of the worker the name of the company all those kind of things are text fields in work day okay yeah. that's how it is so these are the type of fields when we'll be using calculated fields we'll be talking about uh, this one particular thing okay yeah. so this is about today tomorrow we will be talking uh, about a relate primary business object and related business object and then we'll move to building an advanced report okay okay yeah make them that's what i told you go in through the system to then see which sign do they have attached to them do they have a currency sign or a numeric field sign you will be able to identify that usually okay. they are currency field i know that it's a currency field but yeah just look for that sign okay and okay. you will be able to identify it okay like you if you want to understand which kind of field they are this sign always remember these signs and it will help you understand that okay 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 yeah Oh, okay
ओके मैम ओके मैम लेट्स मीट अगेन टुमॉरो एंड जस्ट एज अ असाइनमेंट गो एंड एक्सप्लोर ऑल द फाइनेंस डेलीवर्ड रिपोर्ट्स इन योर सिस्टम एंड इट विल गेट इट विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स बेटर इन द कमिंग सेशन ओके ओके श्योर या थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू लॉट